Hello and welcome to True Crime Diary, a light-hearted podcast on a serious subject. Every two weeks we look back through true crime stories to discuss an event that took place on this week in history. I'm your host Mark Decano and with me as always are my friends Jed Lester. Hello. And Rue Turner. Hello. So the date we're looking at this week is the 3rd of February and in 1967 one Ronald Joseph Ryan was hanged for murder in the state of Victoria. The last person to be legally executed in Australia. What did you say? 67? Correct. Is that after the last person here? Was Ruth the last person or the last last woman? Woman. 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 The last man was uh, Gwyn Evans, I think it was. It was lovely. It was executed in 1964. The last What's man. the answer to my question? Gwyn Evans and Peter Allen were the last men executed in Britain. Okay. And the death sentence was c- uh, continued, but everyone was um, so, uh, commuted. All right. Australia stopped in... 67. 67. Yes. Okay. But they didn't. They abolished it in 1985. Right. Okay. 1985. Last, yeah. Really. Oh ab- abolishment is more of an acknowledgement of of yes. what you oh, what sorry, you're doing. Right. They actually the they didn't person, do any between the last person. And... The last person hanged was 1967. Yeah. Right. This man Ronald Ryan. Yeah. And then it was officially off the statutes in 1985. Mm-hmm. My God. Yeah. So they stopped doing it at they, they at, stopped at his. Death. Yeah, so you could be sentenced to death, but the yeah. death sentence wouldn't be carried out, it'd be commuted. But they eventually went, we're definitely, I definitely don't think we're going to do this ever again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the um, 80s. Australia actually introduced <laughs> legislation that would prevent the death penalty being reinstated as law. So there's a law that says oh, right, you okay. can't make it law. <laughs> Can you do that? Can, can you, you make can a law I mean, you, that says you can't make a law? I mean, you could do that about anything, though, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah but then you just repeal that law, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Isn't that like the, um, the American Constitution? You can't change that. Oh, uh, apart from the amendments. Apart from the amendments. And, and the amendments to the amendments and the removal of the amendments. What? So, why apart are we, from that, why are we talking it. about this bloke? This bloke. Ronald. What was he called? Ryan. Ronald, <laughs> Ronald Ryan. Ryan. Yep. Well, technically he was called Ronald Ryan. Officially he was called Ronald Edmund Thompson. Okay. But he changed his name. Because he didn't like it. And it was associated with being a murderer. <laughs> it was a murderer. They always do that, don't they? <laughs> well, he, wa- he wasn't a, a murderer initially. He was convicted for robbery. And mm. some would say he never was a murderer. Hmm. Mm, he sounds very intriguing. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but that he was, was executed for murder. Mm. murder. And therein yeah. lies the controversy, which we will address. Ah, the reason right, okay. yeah, fine. for our discussion today. I'll give you a little bit of backgrounding about who, who him, who yep. he is, who the man, who he, who he. So Ryan's um, father, his his mother had um, remarried. His original father died in 1927. Curiously, he managed to fall from a tram and get hit by a car. Oh, wow. Dear. <laughs> That's a, that's a rough he day. He was determined not yeah. to survive. He it, fell off, see. then got run over. Yeah, he fell off a tram. Even though under the car, a car would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they did, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine he did. They attempted. Yeah, oh, that's um, a shame. So he fell off a tram, off a tram and immediately got, got fallen over. under the under the hoofs of horses sure, as well yeah, as yeah. the tram. Mm. Yeah, well, he died. Okay. Um, so his mother remarried a man named Ryan. So, yep. And that's when Ryan adopted the name Ryan, after his new dad, Ryan. Right, okay. yes, okay, yeah, yeah. My name is Ryan. Because I won't fall under a tram then. Yeah, that's the theory. Guaranteed. Now, in 1936, because of an issue of theft, the children were suddenly went into welfare. So they were taken away. Ronald went to Rupertswood, which is the Salesian Order School for Orphaned, Wayward and Neglected Boys. Well, hang on. What, what, what do you mean, because of an episode of theft? She, well, I imagine she one of them, something. One of the parents. Well, there were, it, it's, yeah, it's not identified realistically. There was a, there was a, the mum. There was a theft, apparently, uh, from one of the neighbours' houses. Uh, of a watch, a watch was stolen. House. Oh right, <laughs> house was stolen. <laughs> a watch was stolen from a neighbour's house. Oh yeah, and um, investigating authorities accused. W- well, they went somebody. to them and said, "Oh, you've got wayward ma- children. Many children who are wayward, orphaned, or neglected." Oh right, I'm so sorry. I thought the parents were being accused. There's no information the about the theft of the watch that I can ascertain. Okay. 
specifically. But regardless, <laughs> they went here. They, they went wayward to children. You're oh, wayward, you That's are. That's unfortunate, <laughs> isn't it? They said. Uh, so the sisters, his sisters went to a convent. As you do. How many it's sisters? A bit all, all a bit unfortunate, this, isn't it? Yeah. Just not circumstance, but just Cause if one of the someone's... Kids... Well, I say if one of the parents stole a watch from the neighbour, yep. that's no reason to put all of your children in. Care. No, no. And if one of the children stole a watch, there's no there's reason, no to, reason to put all of the children in care. Seems a bit yeah. much. Yeah, it's a bit of a over response, you know. Yeah, a hyper response. Well, I mean, what did what does it take? You walk in and you go, oh, your these children are neglected. Yeah, no, that's true. Excuse yeah. me, we're investigating a watch. They must have noticed something. And I notice you've got some neglected wayward children. Right. <laughs> Since I'm stood here. I suppose so. Yeah. It must have been not a good situation for the children to be in. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So in less than three years, yep. young Ryan absconded. He fled from the home. Sure. Because he was wayward. That's it, I'm out of here. Probably because he was completely innocent of what doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Watchification. Yeah. Watchification. Um, he uh, he earned money variously from things like sleeper cutting for the railway. Sleeper cut? Oh, cutting! Right, yeah, okay. Cutting sawing sleep- sleepers. Yeah, sawing. Okay. And uh, which ho- are like pretty hefty tree big, big logs. Old pieces of wood. But they? I mean, the tree that they come from, oak or something. But they're right old lumps of wood, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they. Yeah, that's what they. It's call funny, them. isn't it? They <laughs> haven't. The sleeper's never been updated to being, I don't know. Metal or, or or whatever, it's all it's still wood, isn't it? But Even it, now, it's a good material for that kind of position, though. What? Because there's an element of absorption. It's, yeah, there's a in little the, bit of flexibility, and it's a very uh, resilient material. Wood, I and mean, it's a superb material for so many things. But it, for any who, who don't know, in the in the Northern American region, they're yes. known as a, a tie. Uh-huh. Not is a, it? We call it a sleeper, they call it a tie. Why do we call it? Is that T I E or T Y E? T I E. T I E. Why do we? Sleeping policeman. I sleep. don't know. I, yeah, it's not. I don't really know. I think it's yeah. It's just a a lump, a, a motionless base, motionless a sleeping. Tie. They call it Something a tie because it ties base. the rails together. I guess. I mean, he does. Why call anything anything required to oh, work? Yeah, right. yeah. Anyway. Anyway, he was a sleeper cutter. Also, he uh, hunted kangaroo. Really? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, kangaroo man. That's hard work. I would have thought. Cause I mean, they're extremely dangerous. I animals. assume he had a gun. It was <laughs> less dangerous <laughs> if you're holding a gun. Yeah. yeah, if you're holding boxing gloves, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, fought, he fought them to a standstill. Yeah. Three bouts, <laughs> two falls, two submissions. Or kangaroo not. meat, kangaroo meat. Yeah, mm. he met it I've... and then he shot it. I don't think if I've ever had kangaroo meat. I've know. had kangaroo. I think I have. I think yeah, I've definitely had crocodile. One. Tell you what, I've had. Yeah, here we go. Uh, buffalo. Uh huh. Um, Buffalo wings. It was at the Great British Beer Festival once, and they, it was a there was a stall that sold funny meat. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> was it, funny meat burgers? Right. Was it called funny buffalo? Meat? Buffalo's not that stupid, silly, is it? Uh, oh, Did you mean zebra. buffalo? I've had zebra. Zebra. Is well, that's interesting. Buffalo or bison? Is it like chicken? Uh, zebra. What's the difference yeah, between like buffalo? Is it buffalo like and bison? chicken. <laughs> buffalo is African. Bison is American. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. They, what, they, what America's called buffalo is a bison. It's not a buffalo. Buffalo live in Africa. Why are we talking about this? Because you said you'd eaten a buffalo. I don't want to yeah. know if you've eaten a bison. Well, I'm, I'm having second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, Could have I've, been chicken. I've, I've t- <laughs> no, no, no. It was meat. Meat. Sorry. Red meat. Red meat. Yeah. Cow. Zebra. Zebra. Mm. I mean, I say all this. Yeah. And it could have all have been, <laughs> it could have been, just been it's all cow. some burgers. Just labels. <laughs> These guys eat too much red meat. Anyone who's eaten a cheap product with mince meat in it has probably had horse. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've definitely, 100% had yeah, horse. Zebra. Definitely had horse. When I heard that there was found horse meat in lasagna at Tesco, I ran to that yeah. supermarket. Definitely. Mmm. <laughs> um, Holy horse. Give you the anyway, trots. I, I still, it, it's just a burger, isn't it? I mean, you just put a label on it and say, yeah, it's iguana or whatever. Oh, yeah, well, I'm eating an iguana. Yeah. yeah. You know. I had uh, uh, the label suggested oh, that yeah. I've had uh, emu oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's like chicken well, it's more like turkey I found but big turkey yeah what do you mean the label the label on the where meat, were you meat pe- in the supermarket what here yeah 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 
There was a period. There's a little emu here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. Was a, yeah, yeah. There was a period where specifically where they said, oh, look, exotic, yeah. exotic meats. That's true. I used to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone was doing it. Before it. When, they, when everything ran out and they put mm. horse in the lasagna. Yeah. Before they started mixing it in with the other meats and not telling you. Where did you have. Kangaroo. Where... Yeah, I had emu and kangaroo. Mm. Mm. I had crocodile. Oh, that yeah. was nice. Yeah. It, it's weird because it looks like cod. But tastes it like does, chicken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of all just a, that that confusion. It doesn't look like cod. It looks like yeah. because it's yeah. white, white. It's meat. White, white, yeah, because yeah. it, it's it's a sort of a white. I mean, it's exactly like cod. It looks exactly like cod, but on a, on yeah. a macro scale. If cod had loads of teeth like and a long tail. Yeah. But when you put it in your mouth, it goes. Oh, it's, it tastes like just like chicken. It was really nice, was it? It's nice. Yes, it tastes nice. Mm. Does that mean that all animals have the same bacteria in them? Because what you're tasting is bacteria. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So that's why everything tastes like chicken, because you're tasting the bacteria. Yeah. And it's oh, not that okay. everything tastes like chicken, it's that everything tastes like everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And chicken is the reference that we all have. Of course, because we have no other. Because no, we eat loads yeah. of chicken. Because in the West, chicken is what we eat. What was the last Hello. exotic uh, or funny animal you ate? I had a hilarious I'll tell you. Turkey. I'll tell you mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, yeah, <laughs> crocodile would probably be the most recent... Weird thing, I suppose. Yeah. I had uh, grasshoppers on toast. Oh, this is be lovely. <laughs> this is extremely nasty. No, it was quite um, nutty. Uh, what was it like? It was, it was perfectly for, nice. Yeah, I mean, I have had them, but not for a very long time. It was perfectly nice. Hoppy. I'm trying to think what it was. <laughs> it tastes hoppy. the hops. Hoppy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think what hoppy. it was like. Uh, <laughs> it was very savoury. Yeah. Um, I found them nutty. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Crunchy? Yeah, crunchy and nutty. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, yeah. yeah. Next we have number four. Crunchy frog. Ah, yes. <laughs> anyway, good talk. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on MasterChef. Yeah. <laughs> so as well as a kangaroo content, yeah. um, he also uh, was a tomato, tomato farmer. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, right. yeah. Was he? Tomato farm. Okay. I've had a tomato. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you eaten tomato? When was yeah. the last time you had a tomato? <laughs> Today. Yeah. Just um, um, you're right. Tomatoes, kangaroos, um, uh, painting. He was a painter for the uh, electricity right. board. Right. Um, I didn't spot that. And that's a timber kind of cutter. Thing I look out for, and I've not. I didn't see that. <laughs> and a tim and, and a sleeper cutter. That's good. That's a good. Uh, yeah. uh, what's a trifecta? No, uh, quad. The quad vector. vector. So, That's uh, pretty diverse, isn't it? Sleeper cutter, uh, kangaroo hunter, tomato farmer, painter for the electricity. Board. Literally, they've got no connection to each other <laughs> at all. No. Have they? Well, they're just... they have one connection: unskilled labour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. What, what are you saying about painting? Unskilled. <laughs> <laughs> Deeply unskilled. Horrendous. They won't get. He wasn't doing portraiture for the state okay. electricity. He's painting That's walls. Yeah. He's painting yeah, walls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a decorator. No, 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 no. Just painting. Oh, yeah. No, he was, uh, ironically, he was painting kangaroos eating tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whilst standing on sleepers. <laughs> whilst asleep. So whilst asleep. Yeah. Jack of all trades, but master of none. Too bad, too bad. So, he managed to move to uh, not, Victoria, not get much of married. An achievement. He changed his uh, faith from... Catholicism to Church of England so he could get married because his, oh, okay. yeah. his, uh, his wife was it's more of a sideways shift though isn't it really yes um, he did convert back to Catholicism but only when he was waiting when it was convenient to hang <laughs> yeah. oh. and then he became a mechanic so he started to train to Mechanicism. learn to Not learn skilled. the skill yeah. <laughs> now there was a point at which we suddenly start the criminal life of Ronald Ryan Oh, right, yeah, yeah. We haven't done any bad things yet, have we? 1953, the house he was renting was burned down by an arsonist. Mm. Now, it turns out the arsonist was caught, but he said that Ryan had put him up to it um, to claim the insurance money. The arsonist oh. was given a job by... By him. Um, that was the claim. I would say the arsonist still did the, the main culprit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He made me do it. No, I didn't. Well, yeah, very much so. <laughs> I mean, he uh, he was up in court on a charge of arson, but he uh, he got off. He was acquitted no, for lack of evidence. Sure. But um, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. Uh, right. Of, of it all. And how old was Ryan at this point? 23. Uh, 23 at the point that he was employing people to burn his house down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
just trying to draw the picture. You know, <laughs> I think we've all had wild moments in our youth. We? Yeah, yeah, I remember burning. The house <laughs> Did you burn your own house down? Laughing yeah. head off. What was I? Framing someone else. I think. I think by the time <laughs> I was. 23, did we say 21? Yeah, let's say 23. 23. Yeah, 23, yeah. I think I'd done far worse. Really? Far yeah. worse than burning your own house yeah. down. Yeah. Sorry, far worse whoa, 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 than whoa. telling someone else to yeah. burn your own Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hypothetically, so charges do not pen. <laughs> <laughs> like Six what? This podcast. Um, I don't know. I mean, by the time I was, what, 16, 17, I was probably... Setting light to myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hooray! Were you, were you well, uh, hadn't quite progressed to setting fire to the house? Well, if you'd achieved it, there'd be a, it'd but just be a two-man podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd need a contractor to go that far, you know. Jesus. But I, yeah, certainly I'd like... Were you I, protesting I, 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 the Vietnam I clearly Wars? remember yeah. filling my pockets with bits of paper and then lighting the petrol and running through a forehead. What? Like, what? A, a blaze. To what to end? The glory to achieve of the flame. To know? achieve what? What? For the immortality glory of the flame, you know, it's just to be a fire. Were you on your own? Forest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say no. It was with a big gang no, of there were eight of us. <laughs> chaps up to japes. As but usual, no. I was on my own. Jeez. I mean, that, fire to I mean, myself. To, I mean, you know yeah. how it goes. Well, it's not that bad. You go it? alone. You're in the woods. You, yeah. you light yourself on fire. It's you one. doing it to yourself. High jinks. Yeah. I cannot find the words to truly express my joy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's what you do, isn't it? Uh, not me, not what I do. When I was sixteen or seventeen, I did absolutely. Let's play with Lego, probably. Honestly. When there's Nothing. nobody else to set fire to, what are you going to do? Ah, well, let's, it's Yourself. good that you were on your own. Then let's put it that way. Alone in the woods, finally. Oh, so that's why you're hideously di- disfigured. <laughs> I always thought that. No, I was too no. embarrassed to ask. That's Mother Nature's fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> back to the story. Okay, so Ryan, by the time you get to the mid fifties, fifty six, fifty seven, mm-hmm. he's passing bad checks. Um, he's found with uh, forged checks. He's caught with goods that have been purchased with bad checks, etc. Et oh, right, so this is spiraled yeah. quite. So he's yeah, he's getting Quickly. into uh, fraud and, and silly, uh, silly things, all that jazz. Yep. Nineteen sixty comes around. He's arrested for robbery. Yep. Right. And they escape custody. He and his accomplices. He runs away. He runs away. I must get out of here. I must get free. Um, Now, he and his accomplices were recaptured after a number of days, and in June of 1960, he pleaded guilty to eight charges of breaking and stealing, and one of escaping. Breaking and stealing? Yeah. Do you steal something and then break it? Hang on, you can't... You don't... What did you say? He got charged for escaping. And one charge of escaping. That can't be right. You don't get charged for escaping. You get charged for the reason you're in there in the first place. No, no, no. Yeah, escaping you caught first. Escaping from lawful custody is a crime. Uh, but surely they would refer to the reason why he was arrested in the first place, the silliness or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> arrested for eight uh, charges. Well, of forget silliness. about the silliness. You ran away, mate. Yes, Robert. What's yeah. his name? <laughs> Ronald Ian. Ryan. Ronald. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Forget about what you did. You ran away. I yeah. suppose it could make it. It made makes yeah. it worse. Escaping lawful yeah. custody mm. is a crime. Yeah. So, it, irrespective of what, what if he was found guilty of the other charge, mm. innocent. He might have been arrested for being a bit rude to a policeman. Well, that's what I'm saying. Or and if he was arrested and then ran away from that, then that's a far more serious, crime, more serious crime than crime. Right, being okay. a bit rude to a policeman. Yeah, oh, I suppose it is. Yeah, because he escaped custody. So that's. I mean, that's an arrestable offence. All right, fine, fine. I'll allow it. <laughs> for the, thank you. For the charges of breaking and stealing and escaping, yes, he was sentenced to eight and a half years in prison. Oh, God. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Seems a lot. Breaking. Sorry, what was the breaking Breaking bit? and stealing. Breaking what? Well, presumably breaking, breaking and entry. House breaking, breaking, breaking and entry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's just a term- you broke it. <laughs> right. Okay, sorry. I, I mean, I'm imagining that the terminology in the colonies sorry, was yeah, yeah. slightly different. Right. You, you broke it. You paid for it. Yeah, yeah. Breaking. Or eight years. <laughs> you, break it, you break it. You bought it. Uh, I'll pay for it. <laughs> so he received eight year. He received sentence. eight and a half years. Still he seems a bit much yeah. to be. Nine's too much. Eight. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit low. 
<laughs> eight and a half. That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> about right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Goldilocks zone, yeah. isn't it? Right. <laughs> Uh, he served a little over three years before he was on, on parole. Okay. Apparently, he was a model prisoner in that time. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like he was trying to rehabilitate himself. Um, he did his like um, formal school certificate. You know, he did like catch up yeah. yep. courses in prison. So he did that. Um, and he was out on parole and he spent a couple of months working as a clerk or a clerk. Yep. And then he went one day he went to lunch and never came back. Okay. He managed to procure some explosives and decided to spend the rest of his time <laughs> come from blogging. Working on a clerk. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say clerk and I'm having my lunch. I thought you, know you what? I thought you were gonna say he managed to procure a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> he stole some post it notes. Yeah. Well where did that come from? He decided to become a robber. And he specifically he's robber. a robber. What are you? A robber? A robber. He decided to rob butcher's shops. Uh, right, okay. Well, he decided he's going to start doing uh, robbing safes. Steal, oh, I thought, steal right, the again. money. Oh, is it? I thought <laughs> you meant to steal <laughs> sausages. <laughs> yeah. Steal Jesus. some crocodiles. You steps. really are leaping ahead on these. <laughs> I'll get some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> he stole kangaroo steaks. You're, you're stealing food? Use explosives do. to blow the safes. Oh, uh, right, uh, okay. <clears throat> so in 1964, January. Ryan and two of his accomplices were arrested in <laughs> New South Wales and admitted to nine robberies. Uh, and in November 94, he received an eight-year prison sentence wow. for breaking and entering. We're back to an actual eight. An another actual, eight years. Another eight years. Right. Another eight years. And he was sent to Pentridge Prison. There's a link here. There is a link here. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. yeah. Do you want uh, to expand? <laughs> Ned Kelly ended up in the same prison as Ronald Ryan did. Really? He did. Yeah. They were both convicted in Victoria. Right. And they hadn't updated their prisons? In well, they, several uh, apparently there was only decades. one prison. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ned Kelly ended up... Well, he was in, in the prison in the early days of the prison. Was sure. Within the first sort of 40, 50 years of the prison. Yes. When it still had a panopticon and... Was a very brutal and unpleasant place to be. Yeah. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Yeah. But it only opened in, what, 1780 something? What do you mean only? That was another. Well, because the country didn't exist as far as we were concerned mm. before then. <laughs> we went there, put a prison there. Yeah. Well, we made it a prison. Oh, well, exactly. <laughs> yes. Transportation to the colonies, do you see? Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway. yeah, eight years at Pentridge in Australia. Did he yeah. serve it all Victoria. this time? No, he didn't. And this is where our story gets exciting. Time. Too late. Had a chance. Muffed it. While in the prison, Ryan met Peter John Walker, serving twelve years for bank robbery, mm. a hardened criminal. So two robberers meet. Yes, and Ryan found out while in prison that his wife, Mrs. Ryan was seeking a divorce. Oh, yeah. And he decided... From that, him. From him. Mm. <laughs> so he decided <laughs> that he had to escape. Really? And Walker decided he would go with him. Mm. Oh, okay. Shh, Ryan. We're busting out of here. I saw um, a few documentaries, and Ryan spoke to Walker. And I mean, I actually saw a footage of Walker talking about this. Mm -hmm. And Walker said that Ryan said to him, oh... And I'm pointed up to these these gantries on the top of the walls at these corners where the the towers are, mm. um, where the the guards sit, and said, "What about going through there?" And Walker said, "Are you like are you mad? That's like that's literally where the guards are." And he said, yeah. "Think about it," and just left him. And he said it took him about a year before he came around to the idea. And then Walker said, "Yeah, yeah I think that's possible. We can do it." So, Ryan found out his wife is seeing a divorce. Yes. He decides he's going to escape from prison. Walker mm -hmm. says he determines ultimately that he'll come along, but it's a year before the plane goes into action. Um, yeah. Do you think he w was escaping prison to rectify the marriage? Yeah. He, the idea is that he wants to escape, he wants to reunite with his family, and in yes. one glorious hug of reconciliation, they will all flee to Brazil. Brazil? Yes. Oh, I, with I no extradition. I think this is a crazy idea. Absolutely mad. As I oh, wow. I wonder why Brazil. No extradition to Australia. Oh, right. That's it's a what? long way from Australia. But it's, a, it's a very different beast to yeah. Australia. Right, right. Oh, OK. The other thing I think that's worth thinking about is from the descriptions of Ryan that I've heard of, he, he really doesn't like authority that much at mm -hmm. all. 
And he's not a violent man. You know. He doesn't sound that. No, he's not a nasty horrendous. criminal. I mean, it's obviously you know a bit of a naughty boy. I'm sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not a really evil, sadistic we've kind done, of guy. We've talked about worse. And the yes. conditions at this prison are really, they're not great. I mean, as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's got pauses. <laughs> it's got this pentopticon kind of structure. What is that? Five pentopticon. Yeah, it's, it's not always five. It's quite. It's usually yeah. eight. <laughs> Oc, toc, well, it's, more, it's, pan, it's panopticon, right. not pentopticon. Oh, sorry, pan. Right, yeah. Okay. So it's it's what it's normally based around is this central tower, which <laughs> which is yes. which is where everyone is monitored from. Yes. yes. And then good all idea. The prisons I can visualise it now. Are surrounded around it. Picture um, the spokes of a wheel. Yeah. Oh yeah. Radiating yeah. out from a central hub. Yes. Mm. Like yeah. a plunk. Perfect vision. Yeah. yeah. Like that. You know the cylindrical kaplunk tower the, yeah. with a tray around it. <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> like, like that. So basically the. Uh, the arrows, no, what are they called? Picture the the uh, a Trivial Pursuit board. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yes. Yeah. But without the outer wall. Without the outer wall. Where the... But it does have an outer wall because it's a prison. You doubt my prison security? In this instance, the way it was used was like the central column in the yep. middle was the where the, the viewer would watchers. sit. So the watch, yeah, yeah, exactly. The watchers would sit. Watchmen. But then the idea of the watcher was that you couldn't see the watcher. Sure. So you never knew if you were being watched or not. Sure. And that was the idea, is that actually, in reality, you could not watch most of the time. Right, yeah. Because also, you're, if you're looking in that direction, there's stuff behind you. Yeah. And if you're the outside of the wheel, and the spoke of the wheel could be watching you, you could anyone could be watching at any time. Yeah, and any sure. of you in any of the areas around the wheel could be being watched by the watcher at any point. Sure. So you just... You just behave. The idea is that you just behave because you so feel it worked. Like, yeah, it's the kind of the Big Brother notion before Big yes, Brother. Yes, of course. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The Panopticon would have been there when Ned Kelly. Really, was there. really. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Ned Kelly would good. have gone into the environment with with the Panopticon, and it, I mean, it's horrible. It's horrible. They're tiny little cells. These are cells that are one point eight by about three meters. Here it is, chez moi, compact and bijou, compact and bijou. Blimey. So you, I mean, I cannot lie down widthwise in this room. You just want to lie there. Like the like, well, yeah, you would. You would. <laughs> For instance, that, I that cannot lie choice. down <laughs> on my bed. Which <laughs> ways? Hello, my name's Mark Decano, and I host the Comedy in a Nutshell podcast, in which I talk with those in and around the comedy circuit, and most especially the comedians, about what comedy means to them. Simon Amstel plus Lena Dunham plus Mr Blobby. I thought that would be a good combo. Every gig you get is somebody else not getting a gig. I've had sometimes I've had people like pull out a notepad, and I've been like, oh no, no, thank you. You are a jester, and you're here to bring light relief to people's lives. Somebody at the end was like, oh my God, she's dirty. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Thank you very much. My boyfriend says he feels like he has to tread very carefully because he was like, I know that everything has the potential to become material. I can now give to people and they definitely in that moment are having a good time. So if you want to know more about what comedy means to the people at its heart, then hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Comedy in a nutshell, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Fringe, baby. <laughs> Nineteenth December, nineteen sixty-five, yeah. Sunday afternoon. The prison officers are taking turns attending a Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taking fine. turns, taking turns, one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's quite the hop, one person at a time. Say the crackers are a bit <laughs> not eventful. <laughs> Ryan and Walker decide they're going to escape. They drag two wooden benches. To the side of the five metre high prison wall They scale the wall and with the help of a hook And some blankets They pull themselves up on the wall And up they go I, I, I love this bit because they, they knew that most of the guards were going to be away at this party. party. Like, you know, there's going to yeah. be a lot of, you know, a lot of absence. Yes. So the way that they got over what would these days be razor wire is by wearing socks on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Just, yeah, uh, quite right. What about, what about gloves? Yeah. Oh, they didn't have gloves. No, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be issued with gloves. I mean, technically, they... <laughs> 
I love gloves. That's Technically, what I think. Yeah. Think on hands are gloves. They yeah. are. Yeah. Hand and foot gloves. It's, <laughs> it's a one-fingered mitten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mittens, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they ran across the top of the wall, and they get to the prison watchtower. Yep. They overpower the warder, Helmut Lang, mm. and take his rifle, an M1 carbine. They pretty much look like what I had as a kid as an air rifle. Yes. They're quite oh, a nice. small-looking Wooden-y. Thing. Yeah. Wooden-y. Yeah. Wood, it's wooden-y. Wooden-y <laughs> with a metal barrel on plonked on plonked top. Plonked on the top, yeah. yeah. And have an yeah, eight-cartridge eight yeah. cartridge magazine remember, um, that you load up from the top of the breech. Oh, what was that air rifle game? Uh, Tin Can Alley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I remember that? that? That didn't have any bullets in it. That was... It fired infrared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it didn't fire can- Was it like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like the gun it was from exactly Tin Can Alley. like that. Yeah, yeah wooden he apart wooden-y, from the trigger yeah. and the barrel. So, yeah, it's a, it's a wooden st- stock. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and butt... Is all made of wood, wood yes. and a metal barrel, and then and it's a breech-loading eight-cartridge magazine loads mm-hmm. from the from the top. Yeah, and it's the sort of one that you see in the war films and the American GIs, and it goes bang, 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 and it goes ping, and the bottom of the cartridge thing flies out, and you yeah, okay. load a new magazine in. So that's the gun we're talking about. Eight rounds. That's important. Yeah, mm. they were. A, yeah, they were an an army, um, a military rifle. You know. Ex-military. Yes. Yeah. Now they're armed. Um, oh, yeah. So There's one gun though. Got yeah. one gun, eight bullets. Ryan threatened the uh, prison warder, Helmut Lang, to pull the lever opening the prison tower gate. But, unfortunately, he pulled the wrong lever. Well, deliberately mm. pulled the wrong lever. What uh, was that lever for? The, I don't uh, know what the lever Why were there two levers that looked the same? <laughs> well, it opened well, another the, gate. The, oh, the other one changed the tracks on the train. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> One of these opens the gate to the entire prison, and the other one (laughs) serves tea. (laughs) So they went down the tower. Door gate didn't open. At the bottom, there was another warder called uh, Fred Brown. He was on his way to relieve Lang, so Lang could go to the party. And then, uh, so basically, then they had to take him back up to open the right lever. Two, so they've got two blokes He could go to the party. So that he could go yeah. to the party. <laughs> Off yeah. he go. So they have, have they got two technically hostages now? Well, uh, not hostages, but prison warden people held captive. Uh, no, they didn't take them captive. Weirdly, they didn't. Because they were able then to raise the alarm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Your adrenaline's pretty high and really sure. your target is to get out mm. and move yeah. and go away. And you assumed you were going to do it immediately. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately... And the faster you do it, the more likely you are to succeed in doing sure, it. Yeah. yeah. So the more hostages you take, the bigger the delay is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. They're in the tower. They get They've Lang to pull the lever. Again. They take Lang down with them. They're running to Brown. <laughs> the gate doesn't open, so they're yeah. going to march them back up again to pull yeah, the yeah, right yeah. lever. Fine. Then they run back down. They go out through the gate. They're now out through the gate. Yes. They escape into the car park. They're now outside the prison. There's only two cars in the car park. One of them had a flat tyre. <laughs> <laughs> and in the car park, they found the prison chaplain, one Brigadier James Hewitt. Oh, yeah. Uh, Salvation Army rank. Mm-hmm. Cool. They grab him to use him as a shield because now they realise they can't get away nearly uh-huh. as fast as they thought they could. Throw the Catholic on the fire. As is tradition. <laughs> yeah. In Britain. Another officer, Bennett, in the second tower, saw them, and uh, Ryan shouted up that he should throw down his rifle, but he simply ducked out of sight, <laughs> so they couldn't shoot <laughs> yeah. at him. So it's all going to chaos. They're running around in the car park, yeah, they've got Hewitt and one rifle. Yeah. They've left yes. these guards, un, uh, they're yeah. not secured in any way. <laughs> it really sounds like they've, they've spent all this time thinking about how they're going to do, and all they've got as far as is we get to the tower and get yeah. them in the gate, and then exactly. that stopped yeah. planning. Absolutely. Everything after yeah. that has just gone, yeah. no, yeah. we're out. And they go, yeah. well, now what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just gone into complete chaos. Yeah, it's true. At that point, what, or what are you going to you know, do? You have no knowledge about what there is. Beyond the walls. Yeah. Ryan used the carbine and butted Hewitt around the head. Did he? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, Why did you do that? I looked at the court evidence for that and he did well, suffer a, a kind of a, a, a cut on the back of his head that was a couple of inches long, but that could have just been a scratch. A well, he said he was hit with a rifle yeah. butt. And there was a guy at the service station across the road who said that he hit him with a rifle butt. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ryan Ryan said that he was just kind of getting him out of the way, but because he's he's uh, he shoved him. But he also, said, yeah, I shoved him. He's frenzied. But I'm holding a gun. Pressure. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say all the events from this point onward are disputable. Disputable. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> there is yeah. a blur. Yeah. Let's say. Okay. They left the chaplain behind in the car park, and Ryan ran out in front of the corner of the prison. Walker. He went south, he crossed the street towards uh, an, uh, a church. Prison officer Bennett, the man who they uh, shouted up to in the tower, he aimed his rifle at Walker and ordered to stop. Yeah. Yeah? Walker took cover behind a wall. He reached the church and he was just ducked down behind okay. the wall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Lang, meanwhile, who was in the original tower, he's raised the alarm. He's, you've now got an, a loud uh, prison okay. break alarm yeah. siren going off. Mm-hmm. So now other warders start running out. Was it like that? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my nuclear. No. Um, so at the sound of the alarm, other warders start running out of the gate yes. and mm-hmm. into the street, uh, unarmed. Okay. There's a man named George Hodson. He'd been having lunch, and he heard the the alarm go off. When you say lunch, is he having turkey and sprouts? Or Christmas or lunch, he? one presumes. Yeah. Yep. Bennett shouted down to him that he had a prisoner, meaning Walker, who was hiding behind the wall. Mm. Not really a prisoner, but he's saying, you know, he's pointing a gun at him from a distance There's away. There's a prisoner. There's yep. a prisoner. I've got, so he's got someone covered with the with his gun. Yeah. So Hodson went over to Walker and picked up the piece of pipe that Walker had been carrying as a like a, a mm-hmm. weapon. Yeah. And they they grappled. Oh, yeah. So Hodson started to hit him with the pipe. Mm-hmm. And Hodson Walker- and Walker are now grappling. Walker's trying to run towards Ryan, who's got a gun. There's confusion, there's noise. Pipe down. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, meanwhile, accosts a car in the street and threatens the man and woman inside to get out of the car. A new car? A, a, a car that he stopped in the street that's yeah, been okay. driving past. The driver awesome. turned off the car and put it in neutral <laughs> and then got out of the car. All right, yeah, yeah. That's how you park a car in the middle of a junction. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The wife refused to get out. No. She was pregnant. He, in his statement, he said that he noticed she was pregnant because she was yeah. bending over and trying to get something out of the back of the car, fumbling about in a bag. And, uh, well, I mean, the, yes, she, um, first he refused to get out. He then apparently persuaded, by whatever method we don't know, to get out of the car. But then she got back in the car to get her handbag. Yeah. Another warder, Mitchardson, got to the car and grabbed Ryan through the window, shouting out, the game's up. That's it for the escape plan. It's ruined. <laughs> Ryan forced him, this the warder Mitchison, to back off with the weapon, and then it's saw Walker running towards him with Hodgson behind him with the pipe. Everyone's shouting; they're all shouting at one another. Walker shouting at Ryan. Bennett's shouting from the tower. Ryan got out of the passenger side of the car. Yes. With Walker running towards him, he raised his rifle. One thing that can't be denied is that George Hodson fell down dead. Yeah, he definitely died from a single bullet wound. Sure. And there was only one shot fired. But who gunned it? Ryan and Walker therefore escaped and they fled in the car. They made their way south. They changed cars again. They hid in a safe house. 17 days or something like that. Yes, they were there for a couple of weeks. On Christmas Eve, the government of Victoria offered a £6,000 reward for information. Merry Uh, Christmas. Quite right. That's not that much, is it? What, nineteen sixty-five, six thousand pounds? I suppose it is. That's yeah. a year's salary. Yeah. yeah, way, way more than yeah. a year's salary. The day before, Ryan, using the carbine he'd stolen from the prison, yes, robbed a, a bank, herding thirteen people into the safe room and stealing four and a half thousand pounds. June Crawford, who was a witness in the bank, she told reporters, "A bandit told me this gun shot a man a few days ago." Why would you say that to a hostage? Yeah, exactly. Just so you know. <laughs> no, not me. The gun shot a man. Guns don't kill people. Yeah. People with guns. <laughs> <laughs> guns don't kill people. People kill people. But guns make it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ryan was apparently trying to establish a safe house. He made contact with a woman at a hospital and he went there to meet them. But apparently he was recognised and the police were tipped off. And when his car pulled up at the hospital, the six detectives accosted him. Why did I ever escape from prison? It was so peaceful there. This is 19 days they'd been on the run. Yeah, wow. it, was quite a, it was quite a, a sophisticated net, really, that they caught him with. <laughs> they disconnected all of all of the public phones in the area. 
and then yeah. they told this Ooh. guy, yeah. yeah, and then they um, they went into this. It was like a service station or a local shop kind of thing. He was the only person who had a phone in that area. Well, they went no into idea. the shop to use the phone. He let him use it, and then he said, "How much is that?" And he goes, "Ah, oh, sixpence." <laughs> <laughs> so he paid him sixpence, and then he left. <laughs> they hadn't gone very far, though, had they? Not that far. Not that far. No, I'd have gone further. Uh, now this was in Sydney, so they had left Victoria State. So Ryan and Walker both are extradited back to uh, Melbourne to yes. be tried jointly for the murder of George Hudson Warder. Mm. Why? Why would that happen? Because that physically couldn't have been the case. But they just lump them in together, do they? Yeah, this is one of those instances of why did, hang, common. Did, didn't they go uh, try them off against each other? Well, like he, fight to the death. He did it. <laughs> uh, he, yeah. Your, he your mate it. tells us that you did it. Yeah, exactly. What have you got to say about that? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, he, he did he, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he did it. That, that, I mean, that would have happened. Obviously, oh, uh, one would assume. Yeah, and then someone would again. Right, forget this. Uh, well, you're both going down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but he did it. <laughs> he done it. He's the one what done it. Not yeah. me. Uh, well, allegedly, according yes. to the police, sure. if you believe the police, in 1960s, mm-hmm. Brian confessed three times verbally mm. during his extradition to Melbourne. Oh, right. To the crime. Well, he that said help- he that had helps. shot Hodson. However... That helps the case. <laughs> Does it? Does it? Yeah. Well... They just want someone to pin it on someone, don't they? Mm. Yeah. He always denied making any... Well, hang on, you just said he did it. No. Police it. said that he said he did it. Yeah. Yes. Right, OK. The last thing I want to be remembered as is an annoying blabbermouth. He denied ever killing anybody. He'd never made any written confession. He denied the verbal confessions, none of which, once they were written down by the police, that he had made the verbal confession. The confession he never signed any mm. of I, I found it particularly hilarious that some of the confessions came in between him making written statements yeah. that he did not make any statements where he confessed yes and that he is not about to make any statements about that yeah and then during that interview the person who interviewed him made a statement to say that he confessed that he would state that and after the interview he stated it made like made a signed statement that he did not make any confession to such yeah so the only statements he's made is a that he wouldn't make any statements, yeah. and then later on oh, yeah. that any statements made by him were false statements. Well, that was that was a statement, though, wasn't it? <laughs> Arguably, that was a statement. So he went back, went back on his word. So he's already a liar. Murderer. <laughs> <laughs> this case is most intriguing with its multiplicity of elements, its many twists and turns. The Crown versus Ryan and Walker. The yep. Crown's evidence was none. <laughs> there was no ballistics. <laughs> No forensic, no scientific evidence. Right. Mm. But the accusation still... The accusation still stood. stood. The key thing was about the... Really, about the, the weapons, the rifle, slash rifles. Now, allegedly, when he took the gun, if you didn't know how it worked, if you cocked the, the rifle, mm. you would eject a round. Yeah. All if the, you did it wrongly. If you did it wrongly, yeah, yeah, if you were yeah. unfamiliar, you would eject the first round. The way it sits in the breech, the first round is automatically lined up with the chamber. So if you weren't sure how to cock it, you yeah. would eject the first round automatically. Because it was ready yeah. already. Because it was basically ready. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. if you pull, if you pull the bolt, you're going to eject. You're going to eject immediately. Oh, right. Okay. So all the rifles were gathered up, and his rifle had uh, eight, uh, would, had seven rounds in it. But he said he didn't, he didn't fire it. No. So the likelihood is that he cocked it when he picked it up. He ejected well, he, a round. He said that he cocked it he in the tower, exactly. and that he would have ejected one in the tower. Yeah. So there would be one missing, but that one was never found. Yeah. But what there would be, if he had fired it, would be a cartridge case. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Which there wasn't. Yeah, and the cartridge case would fall within... Not very, six foot. Yeah, would within, with, yeah. within a few metres of where he was sure, standing. Yeah. 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 yeah, so all of it was based on eyewitness testimony. This court therefore intends to keep an open mind. I mean, <laughs> what I found really funny is I saw a map which plotted the position of Ryan according to each of the witnesses that said that they heard him fire around. Yep. Every single one of them was different by a really wide margin, <laughs> like by a hundred feet. Really? Yeah. Where everyone was on the on one side of the road said he was, 
he was on their side of the road and yeah. everybody on the other side of the road that said where he was he was on their side of the road mm. and of course under the under the excitement and stress of the event yeah. everything is bigger and more immediate yeah sure than it really is so you, they're, yeah. they're, the person with the gun is always closer to you than you think they are yeah Exactly. Eleven witnesses said they saw him waving a rifle around. Oh, yeah. At least three of those yeah. are prison guards or police. Three of those are prison guards. Yeah. But some of the prison guards said they didn't see him with holding anything. Um, four witnesses said they saw him fire a shot. Two said they saw smoke. Two said they saw the recoil. Um, no, well, it's worth pointing out that the M11 doesn't actually emit any smoke it's, when it's fired. Yeah, it's a carbine, <laughs> so it doesn't. Right. And it is designed for soldiers to fire all day long so there's very little recoil if any smoke yeah, <laughs> yeah. smoke and recoil you don't get yeah so they just don't happen because they need to be yeah. bang 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 yeah, all yeah. day long you know so so immediately you get to trial all of these conflicting testimonies and a complete lack of uh, scientific evidence forensic evidence would constitute reasonable doubt mm. sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so particularly in a case where the outcome could be the death penalty your Honour, the burden of proof for this ridiculous contention clearly rests with my opponent. Yeah, not, not just reasonable doubt, but evidence against. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After eight days at trial, Ryan was put on the stand. He said that he didn't fire a shot. He didn't make the confessions that police said he made. He never said to anybody that he shot anybody. He claimed that the eyewitnesses were trying to claim the reward money by making mm. a statement against him. Oh, yeah. And I think that was demonstrated in court as well. Mm. And he stated... At no time did I fire a shot. My freedom was the only objective. The rifle was taken in the first instance so it could not be used against me. That was his claim. However, after 12 days, Ryan was convicted of the murder and sentenced to death. Wow. Walker, who was charged with the yes. same crime and with the murder of another man while they were on the run, he was found not guilty oh, yeah. of murder, mm -hmm. guilty of manslaughter, sentenced to 12 years. And man sent uh, manslaughter for the other man and for another 12 years. But he was paroled in 1984. He died earlier this year, really? aged 80, yes. Wow. So we went to appeal. Yep. The jury, in delivering a verdict of guilty, apparently assumed the death penalty would be commuted. Because the 35 death penalties since 1951 had all been commuted. Regardless <laughs> They hadn't of they hanged were. anybody... Oh, for 16 right. years. For 16 I years. I mean, you, all right, yeah. fine. But don't... The death penalty was unpopular. <laughs> yeah, but don't go, yeah, death penalty, but he'll be, he'll be all right. He won't actually get the yeah. death penalty. Don't vote for it and then yeah. hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a member of the jury called uh, Tom Gildea said, uh, we didn't want the rope. If we'd known Ryan would hang, I think we would have gone for manslaughter. Hmm. I think that's true. Yes, yeah, that's true. I think, yeah, people only allowed the death penalty to go through because they really believed it would never happen. Yes. Now, there was an appeal. The first appeal was dismissed in June of 1966. Yep. And then the High Court received an appeal later that year, which were overturned. The government never gave anybody anything. So, Sir Henry Edward Bolt was the state premier of Victoria. Um, he decided to deny legal aid to Ryan mm -hmm. and he was running for re-election as state premier but without free legal assistance he couldn't summon expert witnesses he couldn't mm. summon for forensic appeals. Yeah. Yes. and he couldn't summon any defence whatsoever exactly to me that's a denial of human rights I mean um, today that would be seen as a denial of well, human what rights was the, do we a deny the... to reasonable defence yeah sure yeah. but what was the public thought well, the there were plenty of people who were protesting against yeah. Bolte and who were saying Ryan is innocent because he obviously chose but the denial to gain some sort of popularity meaning the popular vote may have been to you know death penalty although people were demonstrating against it it was still very much about he was you know a hard line on law and order yeah. sure sure yeah There'd been this build-up that people were too soft on criminals, and Bolte right, was saying, okay. "I'm hard on criminals. Right, you know, I'll, I'll clamp down on this. I'll stop all this." So even if they're innocent, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ryan was that example, absolutely, even yeah. though he was innocent. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> yeah. get rid of him. Um, so Philip Opus, who was Ryan's uh, solicitor, he applied to the Privy Council in London, England. Oh yeah, 
hoping to get the High Court of Australia judgment overturned, or at least um, investigated. So by December 66, Premier Bolt... We've won the World Cup. Premier Bolt... (laughs) Bolty? Bolty. Premier Bolte's cabinet that released a public statement saying that Ryan would hang on the 9th yes. of January 1967, mm-hmm. but with the appeal to the Privy Council, that had to be postponed. However, the Privy Council said that they wouldn't interfere. Right. So simply deferred, they deferred while, whilst the waiting result. for their decision. Yeah. Yeah. Generally unsurprising, that one. Really. Mm. It, yeah, it, it, it really became a political decision rather than a legal or a justice one. Yeah. All further yes, appeals right. for clemency, for mercy, to the Balti government were denied. Yeah, uh, it's not surprising. There was there was no way was he going to back down on this one. Yeah. So at Pentridge Prison, at 11 p.m. the night before the execution, 3,000 people gathered outside the prison really? to protest. Interesting. Wow. Shortly before midnight, 200 police were called in to manage the demonstration. Really? It was a proper case of rally. Yeah. Yeah. They had signs and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of them said Balti hang. I would have had a sign saying chicken Balti. Yeah. <laughs> How do you spell Balti? Not, not like that. No, not like that. <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with, a, with a low. It's how you say it. <laughs> yeah, Balti chicken? <laughs> Ryan was transferred to a cell right next to where the gallows was going to be mounted. Good place. That's for normal, it. though, isn't it? That's yeah, pretty it normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he declined a sedative. He was offered okay. a sedative. He really? Said, no, because he wanted to write final letters to his family. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. They were written on toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. 57, 58 pages of it, if you can call a sheet of toilet well, paper even give him a page. Some, pa- some paper. I, I, I'd never said to anybody, oh, you know what, four pages this morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a page? A leaf. A leaf is a great word for toilet paper. Is that um, the official word? I think so, yeah. It is now. Leaf of toilet. It is now a leaf. Is that true? Yeah. I believe so. Ryan wrote, I state most emphatically I'm not guilty of murder. His last letter was to his daughters and said, with regard to my guilt, I say only I'm innocent intent and have a clear conscience in the matter. According to a newspaper reporter... So um, a newspaper reporter? According mm. to a newspaper reporter uh, who was present at the time, who yep. witnessed the execution... He said that Ryan <laughs> waved towards the walls and said, well, that or 30 years of this. Yeah, yeah. And seeing what it's like inside that kind of prison, yeah, I think I'd take the noose. Yeah, but you could get pardoned a year later. Mm-hmm. Or just get out. Uh, I Maybe. Mean, or just escape after. <laughs> again. Yeah, yeah. The hangman emerged wearing welder's goggles well, <laughs> and a green cap. Welder's, welder's goggles? goggles? Welder's goggles. Why? He's not going to get anything to cover in his... Yeah. Oh, to be anonymous. Yeah. I mean, Ryan's not going to remember him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you again. Unless he's really going for the... Unless he's misjudged it and he's going for a very long drop and it's going to be really messy. Goggles on, please. Um, a witness said that Ryan looked uh, less than a man, more like a boy waiting to be caned. I mean, mm. basically. Yeah. And um, Ryan's last words to his solicitor were, we've all got to go sometime, but I don't want to go this way for something I didn't do. Mm. With that, the executioner threw the lever, and Ryan was hanged. He was welded to the spot. And that was 1967. Yes, 1967. He was put in a plain coffin, and he was actually buried in a space that had been dug for somebody else. (laughs) He was buried in another man's grave. But it was unmarked. Which oh, I found it was really code, weird. Code number. Um, in 2007, his body was exhumed and reburied um, by his children. Yeah, and it was returned to his family, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, the death penalty was um, abolished in 1985 in Australia, yep. but it started being abolished state by state over different times. 1922, Queensland abolished the death penalty. Wow. Oh, blimey. And, uh, it just so happened that he was in a state that, uh, that still had it. Yeah. yeah. His was the last actual hanging, but uh, the last state to abolish it was in 1985 with New South Wales. So the argument about his guilt or innocence has raged, has raged since. Yeah. With as many people swearing blindly he absolutely did commit the crime. Sure. To mm-hmm. those uh, saying he absolutely did not. But those who say he did and those who say he did not don't matter when you weigh up the balance of whether he might have or might not have. Sure, sure. And yeah. that it clearly, I think it clearly falls 
on the might not have and that we don't have enough evidence to have killed him for it. Yeah. Well, even the people who were convinced that he did do it, i.e. the jury and the judge, yeah. also were all convinced that he shouldn't have hanged. Right. Mm. So the death penalty was the contention, not his yeah. guilt. I think, I think that's almost certainly Bolte's influence. Yeah, for sure. And it is a political decision to kill him. Yeah. Not a judicial decision. Yeah. Yeah. It is no secret that this government has lost a lot of popularity because of you, my boy. Yeah. But the law has a cold heart. It's that's not, the statute. It's not and the that's law, that's what, politics. Well, yeah. Uh, politics has an iron heart. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the thing is, if that's, if that's the uh, if it's murder and murder politics is... has the heart of a greedy baby. What? <laughs> greasy baby. A greasy D. Greasy a greedy, greedy baby. A greasy greasy baby. <laughs> <laughs> a grease baby. But yes, but as before, as we've said, you know, if you're found guilty of murder and the penalty for murder is death, then that is what happens. So they sh- what they should have done is played out on manslaughter. Yeah. yeah. Should. And then he could have gone in prison. He'd be out. Same as he'd been out. The other guard, who was in in line of sight between Ryan and the people in of the car that he was trying to hijack, yes, there was a guard behind him, mm-hmm. and he was, I mean, by all accounts, the only person who discharged a shot that day. Yes, he fired. When so the... he fired a single round, and that is the only round that can be guaranteed to have been fired. <laughs> yeah. And all of the witnesses only state that they heard one round fired. Right, right. Yes, only right. one person admitted that they had fired. Yes. And one person was shot with one shot that can be guaranteed to have been fired. So there. Yes. Yet somebody oh. else <laughs> got convicted and was hung of yeah, the murder yeah. of that person. Yes. But his statement the testimony changed is, as well. Yeah, the t- his testimony changed, and his testimony was just so flimsy. He said that first he said that he didn't have a gun, and he ran inside to get a gun. <laughs> yeah. Then he said he he, he fired. Uh, he was going to fire at Ryan, and a woman walked in the line yeah. of fire. So he lifted and fired yeah. in the air. Then he said that he couldn't fire because there were prison officers in between him and yeah. Ryan, and he lowered his gun yeah. without firing. Maybe but because but his gun wasn't tested for forensics no to see if they were rounds surprise. but his gun was missing one round his gun was missing state from... that he did fire a round yeah exactly it, yeah it changed but, at least three or four times but his first statement said that um he, he didn't hear a shot fired other than the one he fired yeah. that was his initial statement yeah. it was very explicit yeah, yeah. and when you so. look at the positioning of everybody he is behind ryan and the person that ryan is supposed to have shot is immediately in front. Right. So, so this guy was pointing his gun at the person who was killed. Oh, I mean, it's just... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's so ridiculous it and so ridiculous. flimsy. It's obviously some kind of conspiracy to destroy an innocent man. I don't do this very often, and the reason that I'm kind of humming and hesitating is because... this every two weeks. Today, I am siding on the side of the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> really? <gasps> yeah, I totally am. Totally, totally, totally. To a successful conspiracy. <laughs> see, see, the way I fall on this is, the prison guard was trying to shoot Ryan and missed, yeah. and shot another guard and killed him, and, and the went, system oops. around him just collapsed in and went. We need to protect our people. Oh, the administration can't be seen man. to be fallible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is a bad man. It'll we need, stick. We need, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. We need it to stick on get, him. Get rid we of can't the let our guy who made a mistake go to jail, in fact, be hanged yeah. for killing another prison guard. Of course, yeah. This guy needs an election and all these, t- he, all these things he, coming together. He would never have been hanged anyway because it wouldn't have, it would have been... He wasn't setting well, no, out. To yeah, kill there's there's this police. weird yeah, there's yeah. this weird law in Aust- in Australian law at the time where someone who is in the process of escaping from prison, you are actually allowed to take any action required in order to stop them. Yeah, sure, including yeah, yeah, sure. including yeah. killing another one of your prison guards. Yeah, right. But you don't really want that to you know to get out into the public sure, and to be sure. part yeah. of the narrative. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're correct in that he is taking all reasonable, or all possible, I should say, all possible actions to prevent an escape. But you can't have the administration in question when when the alternative is of a convicted criminal gets yeah. hanged. Yeah. Who yeah. cares about him? Yeah, it's all about we well, can't bring down the government based on the idea yeah. that we let our guards just shoot each other. 
We know Ned Kelly was in this same prison. We know that, yes. Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. True that. And I saw a documentary which covered this, and the part of Ryan was played by Bill Hunter. Who? He, he plays Ryan in a documentary. Yes. But he is also in a movie about Ned Kelly. Sure. He played a prison officer. Yeah. In the film yeah. Ned Kelly. Yeah, yeah. 1970. The film. Mick Jagger one. The with Mick Jagger. Yeah, with yeah. Mick Jagger. Yeah, wow. It's such a bad movie, though. <laughs> That's all for this time. If you want to know more about what we've talked about on this episode, then just Google it or something. You can listen to all of our previous episodes on our website. That's www.truecrimediary.co.uk. Please remember to leave a review on your podcast provider if you can, or you can email us. That's stuff at truecrimediary.co.uk. My thanks to Jed and Rue and to all of you for listening. And we'll see you again on next date in our True Crime Diary. <laughs>